Welcome back to RTFM. This time I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite games from my childhood, Asteroids. Or should we say the game I never had as a kid, the 7800 Asteroids. Or the 800XL version of Asteroids. And I also got the RK Classics version of Asteroids. <laughs> so let's get started with some Asteroids. We'll see you in a minute. Atari Anonymous, ever since my husband Luno returned from Earth with asteroids to new Atari home video games, he and the rest of the family do nothing but play asteroids. Luno says asteroids is good practice for his interplanetary life. Tell me, dear Atari Anonymous, with everybody hooked on asteroids, what on Earth is a poor Martian mother to do? New Atari Asteroids, now available for your home. Asteroids, asteroids, asteroids. Um, story of my life. So when I was a kid, I played the hell out of asteroids. Um, and it was a game that me and my sister always played. Uh, you know, just just a go-to game, right? Um, it's just fantastic. So this episode, I want to talk about asteroids. Uh, one of my favorite games and the different variations uh, that Atari has had out over the years. So first things first, um, as I do, I'm going to read... Um, a little bit about asteroids, okay? Uh, just some history of the video game. So it says here on ye olde Wikipedia, Asteroids is a space-themed, multi-directional shooter arcade game designed by Lyle Rains and Ed Logg, released in November 1979 by Atari Inc. The player controls a single spaceship in an asteroid field, which is periodically traversed by flying saucers. The object of the game is to shoot and destroy the asteroids and saucers while not colliding with either or being hit by the saucer's counterfire. The game becomes harder as the number of asteroids increases. Asteroids is one of the first major hits of the golden age of arcade games. The game sold over 70,000 arcade cabinets and proved both popular with players and influential with developers. In the 1980s, it was ported to Atari's home systems, and the Atari VCS version sold over 3 million copies. This version here. The game was widely imitated, and it directly influenced Defender, Gravatar, and many other video games. Asteroids was conceived during a meeting between Log and Reigns, who decided to use hardware developed by Howard Delman, previously used for Lunar Lander. Asteroids was based on an unfinished game titled Cosmos. Its physics model, control scheme, and gameplay elements were derived from Space War, Computer Space, and Space Invaders, and refined through trial and error. The game is rendered on a vector display in a two-dimensional view that wraps around both screen axes. The objective of Asteroids is to destroy asteroids and saucers. The player controls a triangular ship that can rotate left and right, fire shots straight forward, and thrust forward. Once the ship begins moving in a direction, it will continue in that direction, for a time without player intervention, unless the player applies thrust in a different direction. The ship eventually comes to a stop when not thrusting. The player can also send the ship into hyperspace, causing it to disappear and reappear in a random location on the screen, at the risk of self-destructing or appearing on top of an asteroid. Each level starts with a few large asteroids drifting in various directions on the screen. Objects wrap around screen edges. Hmm. Gotta turn it on for you. For instance, an asteroid that drifts off the top edge of the screen reappears at the bottom and continues moving in the same direction. 
As the player shoots asteroids, they break into smaller asteroids that move faster and are more difficult to hit. Smaller asteroids are also worth more points. Two flying saucers appear periodically on the screen. The big saucer shoots randomly and poorly, while the small saucer fires frequently at the ship. After reaching a score of 40,000 points, only the small saucer appears. As the player's score increases, the angle range of the shots from the small saucer diminishes until the saucer fires extremely accurately. Once the screen has been cleared of all asteroids and flying saucers, a new set of large asteroids appears, thus starting the next level. The game gets harder as the number of asteroids increases until after the score reaches a range between 40,000 and 60,000. The player starts with 3 to 5 lives upon game start and gains an extra life per 10,000 points. Play continues to the last ship lost, which ends the game. The machine turns over at 99,990 points, which is the maximum high score that can be achieved. And there's an exploit here it talks about. In the original game design, saucers were supposed to begin shooting as they appeared, but this was changed. Additionally, saucers can only aim at the player's ship on screen. They are not capable of aiming across a screen boundary. These behaviors allow a lurking strategy, in which the player stays near the edge of the screen opposite the saucer. By keeping just one or two rocks in play, a player can shoot across the boundary and destroy saucers to accumulate points indefinitely with little risk of being destroyed. Arcade operators began to complain about losing revenue due to this exploit. In response, Atari issued a patch to EEPROM, and due to the impact of this exploit, Atari and other companies changed their development and testing policies to try to prevent future games from having such exploits. So, um, Asteroids was immediately successful upon release. It displaced Space Invaders by popularity in the United States and became Atari's best-selling arcade game of all time, with over 70,000 units sold. Atari earned an estimated $150 million in sales from the game, and arcade operators earned a further $500 million from coin drops. Atari had been in the process of manufacturing another vector game, Lunar Lander, but demands for asteroids was so high that several hundred Atari games were shipped in Lunar Lander cabinets. Asteroids was so popular that some video game operators had to install large boxes to hold the number of coins spent by players. It replaced Space Invaders at the top of the U.S. replay amusement arcade charts in April 1980, though Space Invaders remained the top game at street locations. Asteroids went on to become the highest grossing arcade video game of 1980 in the United States, dethroning Space Invaders. It shipped 70,000 arcade units worldwide in 1980, including over 60,000 sold in the United States that year, and grossed about 700 million worldwide, 2 billion adjusted for inflation, by 1980. The game remained at the top of the U.S. replay charts through March 1981. However, the game did not perform as well overseas in Europe and Asia. It sold 30,000 arcade units overseas for a total of 100,000 arcade units sold worldwide. Atari manufactured 76,312 units from its U.S. and Ireland plants, including 21,394 Asteroids Deluxe units. It was a commercial failure in Japan when it was released there in 1980, partly due to its complex controls and partly due to the Japanese market beginning to lose interest in space shoot 'em ups at the time. So lots of positive reviews. Um, this goes on to say... Um, yeah, um, there were sequels. 1981, we had Asteroids Deluxe. Um, and Space Duel, released in arcades in 1982, replaces the rocks with colorful geometric shapes and adds cooperative two-player gameplay. 1987's Blasteroids includes power-up, ship morphing, branching levels, bosses, and the ability to dock your ships in multiplayer for added firepower. Blasteroids uses raster graphics instead of vectors. And there were several re-releases over consoles. Um, everything from the Nintendo 64, the Game Boy Color, the Macintosh, the Atari Flashback series of consoles, um, and so on. Three out of this world games from Atari, the number one video computer system with more games than any other. Everyone's gone Atari, Atari. the number one video game. So that's pretty much everything about Asteroids that I want to read to you.
I just want to get into the box art a little bit and before I show you some gameplay in this episode. So this is the box I remember as a kid. It didn't, never lasted long. Me and my sister always tore it up. So um, very cool. That's an iconic picture from my childhood that just gives me the chills to this day. Um, so on the back, it says here, um, your spaceship is trapped in a deadly asteroid belt. You will have to destroy the drifting asteroid boulders before they destroy your spaceship. But watch out for enemy spacecraft. Fire your missiles to destroy the boulders and the enemy. One or two players, 1981. Uh, let me make sure my stuff is turned off over here, which it's not because I'm always on call. There we go. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's Asteroids for the 2600. This one does not have the manual with it, so I can't show you that. Uh, but I did just read you almost all the what Wikipedia said. Um, but I do have the 7800 of Asteroids, uh, which is one of my personal favorites. The rocks have more of a 3D shape. As you can see back here, this is the 800 XL version, which is a very dark version. Um, uses like two colors, which is kind of strange. Um, but this is the version that I played in emulation for many years. Uh, start blasting. It's your only way out of this cloud of hurtling astral bodies, peripheral vision, lightning reflexes, and cool control. That's what it takes to save your ship and your life. Eight waves of devastating asteroids for one or two players. Competing player ships can appear on screen simultaneously. For use with the Atari 7800 series systems, for use with 7800 controllers. So inside this one, I do have the instructions uh, in the 7800 version. As you can tell, they're red and black, just like the Lynx um, manuals for the most part. And I'm going to read this to you in here. I always wish there was asteroids for the 5200, just not um, one of the other um, homebrew games, but, but real asteroids. I really wish it was on this system, and it's not um, in a commercial sense. It says here, uh, asteroids plunge at you. Trapped in a gigantic cloud of asteroids, your struggling spaceship hurls towards its doom. You'll have to pulverize all the asteroids with your photon cannon to save your ship and your life. Rubble from an exploding asteroid bounces off your ship's hull. A glowing blur flashes across your viewing screen. So that's where the rubble came from. The asteroid was blasted by an alien robot saucer. Alien robot saucers are also trapped in the asteroid cloud, and they fire at random. You know that the metal in your ship's hull will register on their target finders before the asteroids do. The saucers could be a worse danger than the asteroids. More rubble strikes your ship. Its hull rings like a bell. If you don't get busy, that could be your death knell. So it goes into detail on how to play the game and um, facing the asteroid avalanche. Not a lot of pictures here. <laughs> um, just basic gameplay and a little... Um, scoring guide over there. So I'll just show you that so you can see different point values. Um, so that's asteroids for the 7800. I'm going to show you that one as well as the 2600 version, which I don't know where the manual is for. I do have it somewhere. Um, blasphemy, I know. Then I also have this arcade classics version of asteroids that I got still in the box. Um, it's very much kind of like. Um, you know, a little LED version of Asteroids. Not the real Asteroids, um, but pretty cool. Um, I love the design on the arcade cabinet as well on the side. It's just how it kind of looked in the arcade. Um, and this is put out by, uh, I think it's Basic Fun. Um, yes, Basic Fun. And Boca Raton, Florida. So you'll see these often in Walmart for sale and Target other places in the games aisle. Um, these are very neat. I really like this little portable asteroid. That's fun. So I also have the 800XL version back here, which I'll also play for you. Um, and those are my kind of my four versions of asteroids I'm going to go over. Um, let me know down below what you think of asteroids, if you have any crazy memories with it. Um, all I remember is being seven or eight and playing asteroids night and day. Um, I remember how the asteroids reminded me of Fruit Loops for some reason because they're multicolored in the 2600 version. And sometimes I would get Fruit Loops cereal and eat it while I played. And me and my sister would fight over the controllers and um, just the sound of the... the it, it almost sounds like Jaws, you know, the dun-dun-dun-dun. And I wonder if that was on purpose. Um, either to sound like Jaws, which was out in 78, or 
just to appeal to that kind of heartbeat sound that kind of pushes your adrenaline. I don't know. Um, but that sound also kind of reminds me of Star Wars for some reason and Darth Vader. I don't know why. Like his theme song. I have no, no idea. But anyway, let me hear down below if you have any uh, memories of Asteroids. Uh, also in the arcades. I remember playing Asteroids in the arcades as a kid. And um, on that big screen, I was so little. And it was much different than the 2600 version. It just seemed faster and more fun to me. I don't know why. Um, but And then the cabinet, of course. The arcade cabinet is just beautiful. Um, lots of memories with Asteroids. So...
So guys, I've got Asteroids back here on the 800 XL. I'm going to just play a little bit um, right here with you. Um, if I can reset it here. And this is the Atari 800 XL slash 800 400 version. It's so funny to see this game these days <clears throat> and think if kids these days had this game, they probably wouldn't play it. It probably might seem too basic for them. But at the time, guys, this was top notch. You know, this was it. Um, and I'm sure many kids played this game thinking they were in Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever. And, um, you know, um, uh, you know, just fighting the bad guys in space. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this version, not my favorite. Um, it's cool to have for the collection, though. Um, I, again, my favorites have a 2600 and 7800 version. So let me know what you think about this one. As an intelligent consumer, I want you to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' Asteroids. But other companies don't make Asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' Missile Command. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. Here's the Arcade Classics version of Asteroids, um, which I won't take out of the box, but just to show you a little bit of what the screen looks like. So 
So I also have my Asteroids uh, Countercade. Uh, people also call this the Atari Legacy Countercade. It comes with these cool games here. Two versions of Asteroids, Lunar Lander, uh, which was inspired by Asteroids as well as a Gravatar. You probably can't see that there, but so let me just show you this, how it starts up here. And you may have seen this before, but I just want to show you all the versions of the asteroids I have in my house, which is a lot. <laughs> there it is. So I also have, upstairs I also have the um, Atari Legacy cabinet as well. And that's got several versions of older games on them. Um, and yeah, very cool. That's the arcade version that I showed you on the BCS. So let me know you guys, uh, like I said, if you have any memories of the asteroids, I definitely do. Um, it's been so fun to look back and to reminisce about asteroids and play a little bit of the games. Which one's your favorite? Um, my favorite's probably the 7800 version because it looks better. However, I have the most nostalgia heart pangs for the original 2600 version. Uh, there's just something about it. Uh, so these two are probably my favorite versions of asteroids. Um, let me know what yours are. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you greatly. Um, uh, yeah, go out and get some Asteroids action any way you can, either from Basic Fun or from Atari itself. There's also um, Asteroids Recharged um, also on the Atari VCS, which is also awesome. Uh, kind of like a different game. I love it, though. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think about Asteroids. We'll see you next time for some more games on RTFM. Bye.